Revelation 17.3 I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, full of blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. And those who dwell on the earth, whose name has not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, will wonder when they see the beast, that he was and is not and will come. Revelation 1.8 I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Revelation 4.8 Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. The sixth king head is not, he is dead, Jesus is not. Revelation 17, 9. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. The woman is Jerusalem and she sits on seven mountains. It's not D.C. and it's not the Vatican. And they are seven kings. Five have fallen. One is. The other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must remain a little while. The beast which was the sixth and is not is himself also an eighth, and is one of the seven, and he goes to destruction. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but they receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour, to destroy, in parentheses, to destroy mystery, Jerusalem. And the ten horns you saw and the beast, these will hate the harlot and will make her desolate and naked, and will eat her flesh, and will burn her up with fire. For God has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose and by giving their kingdom to the beast until the words of God will be fulfilled. The woman whom you saw is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. To stay on topic, I'll get back to the seven-headed, ten-horned beast. The lion leopard bear description of the AC is often equated to Daniel's se Daniel 7's four beasts, but that does not make sense as the fourth beast kingdom or king is the AC and his ten kings who trample down the world. Those other three beasts could be Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, but a case could be made that they're end times kings. I lead, I lead towards them being the Babylon lion, the upraised bear with three ribs being Medo-Persia unbalanced and the Greek kingdom of Alexander's divided into his four generals. Either way, here's another view of the beast's description. This is not saying God is the AC, but scriptures speak like this when God uses someone. This seems to be God using the AC to destroy the harlot Jerusalem. For God to call a nation a harlot and adulteress, he would need to be in covenant or married to that nation. The arrogance of America speaks volumes, believing she is God's, God's country. Hosea 13.4 Yet I have been the Lord your God since the land of Egypt, and you were not to know only any God except me. For there is no Savior besides me. I cared for you in the wilderness, in the land of drought. As they have their pasture, they became satisfied, and being satisfied, their heart became proud. Therefore they forgot me. So I will be like a lion to them, like a leopard. I will lie in wait by the wayside. I will encounter them like a bear robbed of her cubs, and I will tear open their chests. There I will also devour them like a lioness, as a wild beast would tear them. It is your destruction, O Israel, that you are against me, against your help. Where now is your king, that he may save you 
in all your cities and your judges of whom you requested. Give me a king and princes. I gave you a king in my anger, great tribulation, and took him away in my wrath, Armageddon. God puts it on the beast's heart to burn the harlot. Revelation 13. Then I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. I promise all of this is headed somewhere. I'll tie it all together. Revelation 13, 3. I saw one of his heads as if it had been slain, and his fatal wound was healed. And the whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. There was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words and blasphemies, and authority to act for 42 months, that's three and a half years, was given to him. It was also given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. This is midweek. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, every one whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been slain. This is when the falling away from the faith happens. It's when all truth is thrown to the ground. When children betray parents to the death, there is no more time to repent and believe. This is the time of delusion. When we give testimony before kings and are killed by people thinking they are following the will of God. This is a refining and testing of the church, and this is Jacob's time of trouble. Jerusalem falls now. If anyone is destined for captivity, to captivity he goes. If anyone kills with a sword, with the sword he must be killed. Here is the perseverance and the faith of the saints. This is Satan's wrath, not God's. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon, the false prophet. Lying signs and wonders, abomination of desolation, is set up. The mark is given, the first beast resurrected from a head wound, the sixth, eighth king, plus ten kings, take Jerusalem's temple. False prophets rise, causes all who won't worship the image of the beast to be killed, a.k.a. saints given to him for three and a half years. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.6 And you know what restrains him now, so that in his time he will be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Then that lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth, and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. That is, the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish, because they did receive they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved for this reason god will send them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false matthew 24:13 but the one who endures to the end he will be saved this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations and then the end will come mark 13:9 but be on your guard, for they will deliver you to the courts, and you will be flogged in the synagogues, and you will stand before kings and governors for my name's sake as a testimony to them. The gospel must first be preached to all the nations. You will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. Revelation 14.6 And I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven, having an eternal gospel to preach, to those who live on the earth, and to every nation, and tribe, and tongue, and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God, and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And another angel, 
a second one, followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, she who has made all the nations drink of the wine of the passion of her immorality. Another angel, a third one, followed them, saying, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he will also drink the wine of the wrath of God. The mark of the beast, the mark and the beast come before God's wrath. Here is the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Revelation 6, 9. When the Lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. How long, O Lord, holy and true, will you refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell upon the earth? Rest for a little while longer. Revelation 14:14. 14, 14, Having a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand, put in your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, because the harvest of the earth is ripe. Then he, then he who sat on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was reaped. So the angel swung his sickle to the earth and gathered the clusters from the vine of the earth and threw them into the great winepress of the wrath of God. The gospel will be preached, then the end will come. Midweek Jerusalem and her temple and inhabitants are trampled. The mark is given, the beast is worshipped, saints are martyred. Then three angels preach the gospel, Babylon has fallen, Jerusalem, and don't take the mark. That's the three things the angels say. Don't take the mark or worship the beast. This absolutely confirms Jerusalem and the other events. I'll add timelines and continue to build. Read Revelation 15. Much of Revelation is for certain, chronolo is for certain chronological. Some chapters are concurrent, and at times it restarts and gives a different perspective. Revelation 18.4 Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive of her plagues. Matthew twenty four fifteen. Therefore, that backs the chapter up to midweek, as it had just went to the end. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains, for then there will be a great tribulation come out of her. Mark 13:14 But when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it should not be then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains come out of her for in those days will be a time of tribulation such as has not occurred since the beginning Luke 21:20 20. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains, come out of her, because these are days of vengeance, so that all things written will be fulfilled. Woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be a great distress upon the land and wrath to, his, to this people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword, and will be led captive into all the nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. The resurrection, Israel's hardness, is lifted. Jesus' second coming. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Revelation 11 Leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the nations, and they will tread it underfoot, and they will tread underfoot the holy city for forty two months, three and a half years, Babylon has fallen. So tribulation is on one of this of this timeline, the beginning of it, and midweek 
It says, Great Tribulation, Jerusalem tread underfoot for three and a half years. Jerusalem tread underfoot until the rapture. Jerusalem tread underfoot until it, Israel's hardness is lifted. And that's all these verses that were just up here. Luke twenty three twenty eight. But Jesus turning to them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, stop weeping for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that, were ne that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. From the wrath of the sixth seal. Revelation 2.20 The woman Jezebel, Jerusalem slash mystery in parentheses, the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and she teaches and leads my bondservants astray. I gave her time to repent. Behold, I will throw her on a bed of sickness of those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they rep repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children inhabit in inhabitants with pestilence. This next passage picks up at midweek, but also covers the time from when sacrifices begin to when Jesus con re reconsecrates the temple. Daniel 8. It even magnified itself to be equal with the commander of the host of heaven, and it removed the regular sacrifice from him, God being the commander, and the place of his sanctuary was thrown down. And on account of transgression, sins of Israel, mystery, harlot, the host. This okay. I'm sorry. And on account of transgression, the sins of Israel, mystery, the mystery, mystery harlot, the host, the Israelites, will be given over to the horn, along with the regular sacrifice, and it will fling truth to the ground, and perform its will and prosper. And then Luke twenty one twenty three. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress upon the land, Jerusalem, and wrath to this people, Israelites. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and will be led captive into all the nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. The seventh trumpet. Then they will see the Son of Man coming. Daniel 8.13 Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to the particular one who was speaking, How long will the vision about the regular sacrifice apply, while the transgression causes horror, so as to follow both the holy place, temple, and the host? Israelites to be trampled. He said to me, He said to me, For two thousand three hundred evenings and mornings, then the holy place will be properly restored. That's two thousand five hundred and twenty days. Okay, so the sixth king makes a covenant. Sacrifices begin in the third temple. Two hundred and twenty to 295 days between the covenant, the 70th week, and sacrifices. 1260, 1290, and 1335 days. The midweek. Great distress and wrath to Israel. The harlot's flesh is burned. The sacrifice is taken away. In the 2,300 days, Jesus restores the third temple. I hope that made sense. So there's the covenant. 1,290 days, midweek, abominations of desolation set up, sacrifice taken away, and then 1,335 days until the end. Jesus restores the temple, endure to the end to be saved. Daniel 12, 7, it would be for 
a time, which is a year, times two years, and half a time, six months, or three and a half years. And as soon as they finish sh shattering the power of the holy people, all these events will be completed. From the time that the regular sacrifice is abolished and the abomination of desolation is set up, there will be 1290 days. How blessed is he who keeps waiting and attains to the 1335 days. Peter 1 4. To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, keep sober in spirit, fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at, th at the revelation of Jesus Christ. For it is time for judgment to begin with the house of God, and if it begins with us first, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Repentance. I'm leaving a lot out in this and have kind of lost specificity, but it is just so much that you have to go through entire chapters to teach it together. I'll kind of stop there. Hopefully you can make sense of some and pull together a lesson. I'll send specific teachings like on the two witnesses and mystery later and maybe you can make videos. I believe the timeline and understanding revelation is much more important than Trump and the Galactic Federation, although I do believe revelation is describing that. Crazy. The temple Recon reconsecration is in Ezekiel 40 through 48. The establishing of 1,000 years. I'll try to do better explanations. The Great Tribulation. Joel 1 6. For a nation has invaded my land, mighty and without number. Its teeth are the teeth of a lion, and it has the fangs of a lioness. The grain offering and drink offering are cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn. The ministers of the Lord. Gird yourselves with sackcloth and lament, O priests. Wail, O ministers of the altar. Come spend the night in sackcloth, O ministers of my God. For the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is near, and it will come as destruction from the Almighty. Has not food been cut off from before our eyes? Gladness and joy from the house of our God? Joel 2, 4. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and like war horses, so they run. Before them the earth quakes, the heavens tremble, the sun and moon grow dark, and the stars lose their brightness. The sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Joel 3, 1 through 3. Just so much, I'll have to do a separate study. But you see more timeline with seals, trumpets, and bowls. Revelation 9-7 The appearance of the locusts was like horses, prepared for battle. And on their heads appeared to be crowns like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like the hair of women, and their teeth were like the teeth of lions. This is where you get the seal, trumpet, timeline. From Joel, Malachi, Micah, Amos, Zechariah, etc. There's just one name that can keep you out of hell, and it's the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus.